So uh, that's, that's just a quote to show that I'm uh, very uh, well read and very deep. Um, but or I that you know how to search Wikipedia. Absolutely. Well, no, actually, <laughs> that was my quote before Obama. Uh, <laughs> Nick, that one. Uh, I, uh, I assure you. Um, I think, from my point of view, from an ar uh, as an archive, um, I see digital and technology as an enabler, uh, an enabler one to bring the, the past to life and to keep it relevant. But as uh, important as anything is, is to, to make it accessible. Um, so uh, I have been at the archive for 25 years, uh, so I did start when I was seven. Um, <laughs> ho, ho, ho. And what I'll uh, cover today, um, I'll give you an overview of Getty Images, uh, which uh, I think when it was uh, founded was uh, a bit of a swear word uh, in our industry because we were gobbling up all these agencies. Um, I think we feel a lot more of the love uh, these days. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll come on to uh, certain aspects of, of Getty Images and specifically the archive and specifically how uh, we're working with uh, partners to basically monetize their, their assets, which is what this is all about. So, um, moving on. So you can't probably see that. But uh, Getty Images was founded in uh, 1995 by uh, Mark Getty of the uh, Getty family and um, another chap called Jonathan Klein, who's our uh, CEO at the moment. Um, we, we have 19 offices uh, around the globe, uh, which are wholly owned offices. Um, we also work with, within another 34 countries. Um, with what we call master delegates. And master delegates are those offices, it was almost like a franchise, where they only sell Getty Images products. And those products could be stills, music, footage, um, and, and a variety of different products that, uh, and services that we, um, that we uh, put out there. We have around uh, 1,800 uh, employees worldwide. Um, we have 120 uh, staff photographers uh, worldwide, which I'll, I'll get into in a minute. Um, and I think um, the, the area that I'm close to, as well as the archive, is probably our editorial offer. Um, and this year alone, we've won uh, 60 uh, major awards uh, through our new sport and entertainment uh, imagery, including all the top five for World Press Photo. Um, so we're very, you know, uh, the quality is there. And this will come back time and time again. Um, it's about the quality of what people produce. Um, I think there's this idea that technology, you can use it as an enabler, get stuff up there, and if it's rubbish, it will still sell. If the metadata is rubbish, it will still sell, which is absolutely not the case. Um, so quality still wins out. And I'll cover a little bit of that uh, later on. So um, just uh, briefly on our editorial um, division. Um, so we have new sport entertainment. Archive actually sits under our editorial arm, although we're a little bit of a, a schizophrenic. Um, so we have a consumer offer, we have a creative offer, we have a microstock offer, uh, we have various different offers. So we're not strictly editorial. Probably about 50% of our archival images actually sells into uh, the, the non-editorial marketplace, which again, I'll come back uh, and talk about that in a moment. Next year uh, at the Olympics, we'll have uh, 72 uh, photographers there. We are the, the uh, official um, partner for the Olympics in terms of photography. Uh, we have just under 33 million images on our editorial site. Um, and we have around about six and a half to eight and a half thousand, uh, depending on, on how busy the news day has been, uh, images coming through our picture desks uh, every 24 hours. Um, so where we were born, really, uh, in 1995, was based on uh, our creative um, imagery. Um, so the first ever acquisition by Getty Images in 95 was uh, an agency called Tony Stone uh, that, um, that sold into, basically, the stock market. So pr they were primarily aimed at the advertising and, and corporate community. Um, but interestingly, probably at least 30, 35% of those sort of stock images were also selling into the editorial market, whether that's, you know, books, newspapers, magazines, broadcasts, etc., etc. Um, we also have a relationship now on the creative side with Flickr, um, so we're getting uh, content through, um, you know, a, a sort of the general public basically out there uh, via Flickr. Um, and we've also gone to the other end of the market. We acquired a company called uh, iStock Photos, I think three, four years ago. Um, so we actually offer um, all, all types of content and every 
spectrum in terms of the, the uh, from a cost point of view, so all price points. So if you want an image for a buck, uh, and sorry if I'm going to speak in Americanisms and, and dollars, but that's just how uh, uh, Getty Images talks. So if you want to buy an image for a buck, you can, and if you want to spend 150000 on an exclusive image, you, you also can. We actually sold, uh, I think our biggest ever selling set of images was... Um, we did uh, a shoot with uh, Tom Cruise and Angelique Jolie when uh, they had their first child. Um, and we sold that to People magazine for $10.5 million. Uh, sadly, we had to give it all away to charity because uh, that was the deal. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's still a record for us. Right, so moving on to the archive. Um, so I oversee both the uh, stills and the footage division. So we have around about uh, 80 million wholly owned uh, images and around about 10,000 hours of, of footage. Uh, regrettably, out of that 80 uh, odd million images, uh, less than 1% of our content is actually online. Um, so if you actually go to our website, yeah, you can find, with all our partner stuff as well, you can find up to about uh, 3 million archival imagery, images. And to us, archival images uh, means anything 20th century and before. Uh, that's just how we categorize archive. Um, so we've got the same problem as uh, a lot of people out there. We have a lot of content um, that we'd love to get digitized. And even if you said 90% of that, you know, 80 million uh, images are rubbish, throw them away, destroy them, give them away, whatever, that will still leave you with about 8 million images and we've got only about 60, uh, 600,000 of our own images online. So there is gold in the Nile Hills, it's just a case of finding it. And that's, sometime, that's done two ways. One is we're bringing in content um, through partners um, uh, and, also, and also a speculative ed edit of our collection. So literally we're going through negatives and prints and, uh, and transparencies and editing material that we digitize and then put online. We also have uh, what we call a scan on demand deep file service. So as a customer out there, if you, if you go to the website and um, you have seen the same old Marilyn Monroe shots, then give us a call. We might have something in our files that hasn't been digitized before uh, and we will actively scan it uh, put it up on the site so the, uh, the customer can download it and use it. And that's actually a free service to put in the request. You don't pay a scanning fee or anything uh, like that. Um, we do have another side of what we do, which is um, from a conservation and curatorial uh, sort of preservation uh, point of view point of view. So we are, even though we're a business-to-business -business commercial company, we are preserving our cultural heritage. Um, you know, not just our, our national cultural heritage, our international cultural heritage. So we're not a museum, but we're fast turning into one whether we like it or not with that type of material. So we're unique in our industry to have a full-time conservator and a full-time curator. So sometimes people look at Getty Images as this sort of big bad commercial beast just uh, making piles and piles of money. But there's a lot of stuff that we do do in terms of uh, as say conservation and preservation um, and we're probably unique in this country there is no national um, photographic archive um, the closest we've got to that is uh, the National Archives at, at Bradford uh, or the National Media Museum and their film television and they've got a bit of photography so there may be um, you know uh, we gamekeeper term poacher or the other way around we actually might end up being some sort of museum or cultural institution you know further down the road um, We've even inspired an award-winning screenplay uh, called Shooting the Past, if anyone has, has seen that. If, if not, I'm not going to go into details, because that's not what necessarily we're here for. Uh, but we're also working on a musical at the moment, uh, which will open in the West End uh, next year, which is uh, even more bizarre. Um, um, so in terms of our content development, uh, what we're doing to continually build out our offer, we're looking to plug gaps, and, and, and uh, some of those gaps could be um, from a local perspective. So we have, we're very UK, US centric, so we're looking out for more French content, Italian content, German content. Um, so we're looking to build out from a local perspective. We're also looking for niche content as well, where we have a certain amount of material, but we're not necessarily known for it, and we need a name to actually raise uh, the sort of profile of that uh, type of content. So we're just in the process of signing up a, a very famous cricket photographer called uh, Patrick Eager, and you think, well, Cricket is quite niche. It will sell into five countries worldwide, basically, five or six countries. Uh, but having said that, in terms of selling into India, which is a big, big, big market for us, it will be massive. So um, although it's niche, it's not niche in certain uh, uh, regions around the world. 
Also, what we're doing is looking at um, generic content. And what I mean by generic content is content that will sell globally, that will license globally. So a good example would be movie stills. Uh, we've got a burgeoning movie stills collection, everything from Charlie Chaplin's silent stuff to you know, blockbusters of today. Um, uh, the other type of generic content that will sell globally is obviously fine art, so we're looking to build that side of our business. Um, and the other area where uh, we've been very successful has been in uh, music stills. So we've acquired a couple of com uh, companies um, in the UK and the US, uh, as well as taking on a lot of uh, uh, photographers uh, who've sh you know, um, specifically shot music um, over the years. Um, and some of them are wrapped and some of them uh, we've uh, bought collections. Um, so, so part of this in terms of aggregating this content is through acquisition, uh, but it's also through partnership. So, um, I'm not going to read all through that, but uh, just to give you an idea of where we came from, um, and I think this is quite important in our industry to show that, that we're not there's just this bad, nasty commercial beast. Um, but there were two uh, agencies that were founded in around 1854 uh, globally. Uh, one was Alinari in Italy, who was still going, and the other one was a company called London Stereoscopic, a company who... Um, Long story, but Brian May's purloined that uh, uh, collection, uh, much to my chagrin, but that's another story. Um, but these were the first ever commercial agencies to be founded globally, uh, and we're based on one of those. So our lineage and heritage and, and, and roots go back 157 years. Um, so we, we, we feel that's quite important, that we're not just some fly-by-night set-up, you know, dot-com company. Uh, there, there's a real basis there. It's a real living, breathing uh, archive. Um, so that's basically what's at the archive. Um, we also have what we call a vintage room. Uh, so we, we store a lot of uh, vi valuable originals, whether it's by Man Ray, Cartage, Brassai, Cartier-Bresson, and these are vintage prints. Some of them are worth uh, in excess of $200,000. Uh, so as I say, there's a, a curatorial aspect of, uh, of what we do. Now, um, the issue about digitized content, which I touched on, um, as I say, that we're getting around that two ways. We, well, three ways, in effect. Uh, we are accepting digital content from photographers. Uh, some of the photographers we work with are in their 80s. They, haven't even, they don't even know what an iPad is, let alone a PC or, or a scanner. So we're helping to digitize their content. Um, now, we do that two ways. We either do that internally. We have a, a small production facility, so we have various different scanners, and, and um, we have a, what we call a, a search data team that apply all the metadata. Um, we also uh, are outsourcing, uh, and this is becoming more and more, um, I think, popular is the wrong word, but in terms of outsourcing large numbers of pictures, you can get actually very, very good deals out there. The days of scanning and it costing you 10, 15 pounds a picture are long gone. Um, I mean, for example, uh, Time Life, um, they digitized, I think, about 7 million of their images uh, in the States, and they paid less than a cent per scan. Uh, the scans are rubbish, uh, but you get what you pay for. Uh, but high quality scans, um, we're working with a company in uh, India, uh, we're paying less than 60 cents um, a scan and you're getting a nice big file, they do some dust busting, colour correcting and, and basic uh, retouching and that, that's for, as I say, well, less than 50 pence uh, an image. So, um, but scanning, as I'll touch on, is not the issue. So, what I'd thought I'd use as a case study was um, the Science and Society Picture Library. Science and Society are, are, are basically part of the Science Museum, which is part of uh, the sort of National Archives or National Media Museum. So part of that, um, which I'll touch on, is, is the National Railway Museum and, and the National Media Museum uh, in Bradford. Um, now, Science Society was a big breakthrough for us. Um, and dare I say, in the States, the Yanks get it. The Yanks get it in terms of how do they monetize their assets. Uh, and we've, we work with George Eastman House, uh, the International Center of Photography, uh, the uh, Museum City of New York, uh, the Chicago Historical Museum, the Chicago Historical Society, and I could go on and on and on. We work with about 20 to 30 uh, big um, uh, museums and institutions in the States. And they know that in order to generate funds for themselves, they need an aggregator like us um, you don't have to like us, but you can make money off the back of us by us partnering with uh, some of these institutions. We represent the content, we pay them a royalty. Um, now, as I say, the, uh, the US gets it, uh, the UK doesn't. 
And whether that's because of legal issues, because of being partly public funded and what have you, um, is, is an issue. Now, uh, so Science Society was a breakthrough for us. They, they suddenly realised um, that uh, we could generate revenue for them uh, by taking on their content. And it filled, you know, various gaps for us, certainly on the science and technology side. Uh, some rather strange stuff. Every time I spoke to this guy, uh, my contact there, he'd, uh, he'd say, um, he said, you interested in uh, footage? And I said, you got footage as well? He said, yeah, yeah, I've got footage. So, all right, okay. And then the uh, next time I met him, he said, you interested in uh, advertising stuff? I said, you got advertising? He said, yeah, yeah, we've got an advertising archive. I thought, yeah, okay. Uh, and then he said, uh, are you interested in, um, what did he say last time? Oh, the work of uh, Tony Ray Jones, who's a quite a, a well-known photographer in the 60s. I thought, you've got his archive? He said, yeah. And every time I sat down with him, it they had more and more stuff coming out of all sorts of places. So uh, it was great for us. Um, and I'm not going to uh, mention numbers, but uh, specifically, um, but uh, within the last couple of years, we've licensed over 5,000 of their images through our site. Um, and uh, the average price per image uh, is around about $150. Uh, so you just got to do the maths. I'm not going to do the maths for you. Um, so that's enormous amount of revenue come into the Science, uh, Science Society picture library, they don't have to do a thing. They just give us the content, we put it up, um, and we push it out to all those different countries that I talked about. Uh, and it, a lot of it's about proactive packaging, and that's what you have to do with Archive, to show it's relevant, whether it's an anniversary coming up, or an obituary, or uh, just something in the news. I mean, obviously, a prime example is the riots uh, of the last three, four days. And we can show all the stuff from Toxteth and Brixton, what have you, and the whole history, and even going back to the mobs of the, you know, the 1700s. So you can show, uh, show it is always relevant, archival imagery. Um, the thing about us partnering with some of these uh, institutions and agencies is, is obviously trying not to overlap with what we already have. So certain agencies and... and um, third parties will approach us with content, you think, that's very nice, but it's what we've got, and, and we don't want to cannibalise our own sales. So we don't necessarily partner with anyone in, and everyone. There is, a, there is a, a strategy around that. What we do, for, do, though, for some of the people that we do partner with, uh, we create their own sort of um, branding page. Uh, so we called it a landing page or a splash page. So if you typed in well, a bad example, no, I suppose a good example would be... Um, uh, the uh, International Centre of Photography in New York. So they'll have their own page. So you can go to their own page, you can see their branding, talks about the um, International Centre of Photography, and then there's a search box which will just search on their imagery. So there is a certain amount of branding that we can bring uh, to uh, some of our partners um, so they don't get lost in this morass of uh, imagery and, and various partners, other partners that we have. Um, so this is what Science Society brings to us, so that, as I say, they've got about 50,000 images online. We can actually go back to them and ask them for a specific image. If someone asks us, have you got, you know, Stevenson's rocket, um, have you got a photo or an engraving or whatever, they will check their files, they'll scan it, they'll send it to us, we'll put it up on our website and uh, we'll license it. And as I say, there's various uh, aspects of um, Science Society, the Science Museum, National Media Museum, Daily Herald, blah, 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 as I've uh, covered. And this is what we bring to the table. So uh, we have over 1.3 billion page views an annum, um, 60, 76 uh, million visitors uh, per annum. Uh, we have n just under half a million new registrants uh, per year on our site. Our site is available in uh, is e-commerce in 12 languages. Um, I've touched on the offices. Uh, we have 500 salespeople globally. Um, and this all sounds like boasting and stuff, and we're this enormous great beast. And but this is a way of, as I say, institutions and museums and libraries and what have you to monetize their assets. You hand it over, we do all the rest. We do the packaging. We push it out through our salespeople. We, you know, uh, push, push, push. Um, we have 300,000 uh, active customers worldwide, uh, and we're selling into 150 countries. Um, so, um, I've talked about that. Um, and just to touch on, we have um, various different business models. So, as a customer, you can buy our imagery a la carte. So, you just go to a site, you want that image, you set up an account, you download the image, you pay for it. Uh, you can also pay on a credit card. So, if you just want one image, you don't want to set up an account, you can do it that way. 
We also have uh, agreed rate cards, uh, so with certain customers uh, who don't want other types of uh, sort of business dealings, they just want to pay a certain image, uh, a certain amount per image, up to a certain number of images. So we have agreed rate cards, um, as I say, with uh, certain customers. We have subscriptions. Uh, subscriptions is, you know, uh, fill your boots, basically. And this is uh, largely through uh, for the uh, newspaper industry. Um, so obviously the Times and, and whoever. The only national newspaper who doesn't have a subscription with us is The Sun. Um, but uh, I'm sure um, uh, Mr Murdoch might, might want uh, to do that shortly. Um, we also have something we call premium access, which is another business model whereby you can um, have up to a certain amount of images per annum or per quarter or whatever, and you pay a certain a set amount. And that gives you download privileges and all, all sorts of things. Uh, what we've actually found is that people will pay this one amount and they'll download images and then they don't use them, which is just bonkers. Uh, but, uh, so they're sort of like using up their credits. Uh, but, but there we go. And just to, just to sort of finish on, um, and I, I've mentioned this a couple of times, uh, what I would say, if there's one big takeaway, you know, in terms of digital, the one thing that is absolutely key and key to our business is not the picture, although you want good pictures, is um, speed, absolutely, is, is uh, imperative, especially in the news and entertainment environment, uh, but the one key thing is metadata. Uh, and if you've got the wrong metadata or bad metadata, you ain't going to find the image. Going back to the analog days, you know, and people come, and they still come into our uh, library now, and they'll have a rummage through, and you can find stuff by accident. You know, you're going through, I don't know, again, using Marilyn Monroe's example, you'll go through the file, oh, I've never seen that before, fantastic, and you could come across it by accident. You cannot do that on a website, because if the metadata's not there, or it's spelled incorrectly, or, it's, uh, or you're using a strange type of keywording system that makes sense to you, but doesn't make sense to the outside market, you ain't going to find that image. Uh, so we've got various things uh, around controlled vocabulary, um, and so um, predictive text and semantic keyword searching and all sorts of things. We've got actually, I think, 46 patents now around metadata alone. Uh, and as, as I say, I can't stress more, more strongly the, the need for accurate uh, metadata, accurate certainly for archival and editorial stuff, because then you get into whole areas of editorial integrity. And if you're saying that battle took place in uh, Basra, and it didn't, it took place in Baghdad, you, uh, the editorial world will come down like a ton of bricks on you. So we have to make sure that our metadata is absolutely spot on. Um, and creatively, uh, again, you, uh, the use of keywords and a controlled vocabulary, so people find our imagery you know, from a conceptual point of view. So we have to sort of uh, control that as well.